Welcome to Bratislava. Welcome to Erem 2023. Um, we're really excited to have you all here and um, we hope it's going to be a really good and fun week. So, uh, oh, slide. Okay, so just a few housekeeping rules and can I just say to people that are going to be moderating sessions through the week, we have a slide, it's in the shared folder. You should have had an email with the link to the shared folder. If you can use this just to let people know at the beginning of the session, how long the session is going to be, an hour and a half, that sessions will be recorded. The only caveat to that is if there are breakout rooms in your session, which are indeed possible, and our lovely, wonderful streaming people from Aleph will be able to set that up for you if you need it. Um, those breakout rooms will not be recorded, only, the only what goes on in the main rooms will be. Um, Everyone, when they join as an online participant, will be muted. To unmute, you need to raise your hand using the, 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 the tool or put in the, the chat, drop in the chat that you'd like to be unmuted and uh, participate in the session. We really, really, really welcome participation from our online participants. Uh, Thomas will be looking out for questions in the chat um, and letting us know um, what you've got to say and any comments that you have. Um, so you are very much part of our meeting and we again really appreciate the work that the Aleph team have done to set up camera angles so that hopefully you will be able to see what's going on in the room and really feel part of this meeting today and for the rest of the week. Um, so information participants, everybody when they registered signed up to our code of conduct, that basically means everybody here is having a good time, hopefully in a safe, welcoming environment. Um, we think you're a lovely group of people. Um, we hope so. We hope that we will have a week without incident. If you do see anything that you feel uncomfortable with, that you feel is in breach of the code of conduct, then there is a procedure for reporting that. There is a, um, a, a, a form online that goes to a neutral point of contact. So um, Hannah Tomman from the uh, European Science Foundation. Um, Hannah, are you are you here in the room? She, she's downstairs. So she's she's sort of a neutral observer. She's she's here to support, but she's not actually technically part of the the scientific community. Um, and she will be able to see if there are any um, conflicts of interest um, and then make sure that the primary responders who are generally the board um, and people from the European Science Foundation, the executive office, um, enable us to deal with whatever complaints come in if they do. Um, we have evaluation uh, for each session. We've just got some boards at the back uh, where you can stick stickers to say where you come from, uh, who you are in terms of professionally, um, are you industry, are you scientist, are you early careers? We need this for reporting to the Commission, so please help us out with that. Um, and it's also just interesting to know who's been in which session and just what you thought of the sessions. We'll also have a feedback form for the entire week um, and individual sessions may have their own feedback as well. So, so look out for that. But this is why we've got sort of a range of feedback things so that we can hopefully evaluate the meeting as, as much as possible and make it as useful as possible for a learning experience. Um, we have a quiet room set aside, so a lot of people are staying here in the Hotel Soraya, but some people are not. If you need a space to go to where you need a bit of privacy, you, you need to breastfeed, you want to pray, um, you just need to take a bit of time away from the bustle of the meeting, um, you can go to reception and they will give you the key. Today's room is 115. It's not actually going to be the same room every week because we're a bit packed, um, but, but reception will sort you out. You can go be as long as you, you like, you'll, you'll have the key so you have privacy in there. Um, so that's there as a facility for you. We also have gender neutral toilets. Should anybody feel more comfortable with that? They're on the ground floor. Um, so, so look out for that. If there's anything else you need for the meeting, please let me know or uh, Callum. Callum, are you here? Can you, can you stand up and wave? Um, or Peter um, at the back, um, who is the chair of the local organizing committee. Um, or one of the people on the registration desk, and we will do what we can to, to, to support you and help you. Now, many, many people have made this meeting happen. It's been a long process. We've been trying to do this for a year and a half. 
Um, but there have been a few people that have really gone above and beyond and really been dumped in, <laughs> in, in some cases, um, at short notice to, to deal with some of the issues that have come up. And there's been a lot in sorting out the, uh, the accommodation, um, the scheduling and everything else. And it's been difficult times, I think, for everybody as well. There's been a lot of other things going on. So I would like to give a particular shout out to five people without whom it absolutely would not have happened. Um, so... The five are Peter. Um, can you come up and um, I have something for you. Um, so can we give Peter oops, a round of applause, please? <laughs> so that's for you. OK, um, you're right. Is you're right here today? No, he's not. But um, can we give you a, a, a round of applause as well? Because his, his wife had a baby last week, so he's had a lot going on even more in the meeting. Um, the other people that I would like to thank are, excuse me, I'm away from the, I'm away from the microphone, apologies online people, Zafia uh, from our executive office, who as a Slovakian has been doing a lot of ringing rounds and has saved the day completely and her dad with a social event. So thank you very much, Zafia. Um, and then the other two, the other two people are, oops, excuse me, uh, James, James McEvitt. Um, who has organised EPEC Annual Week, again, was given the task and has risen to it magnificently. You haven't had the meeting yet, so I hope it goes okay. Well, there's, there's a before and after prize yeah. as well. <laughs> um, and then finally, Callum, who has done an amazing job in the Tetris puzzle of sorting out all the accommodation. So thank you so much. You've been an absolute superstar. Right. Brilliant. OK, so on to the meeting itself. Why are we doing it? The overarching aim of Europlanet is to promote the advancement of planetary science and related fields for the benefit of the community. Now, we've been trying to do this for getting on for 20 years. Um, Nigel will tell you in a moment about how we've got to this point and how we've gone about doing it. But this time in 2023, it is timely for us to review what it is that we're trying to do. So it's complicated. Um, I think that's the first thing we should say. If there are things that you feel you don't understand about Europlanet, join the club. We all feel like that. These are some of the things that really represent to me what Europlanet feels like. It feels like a bunch of blocks that you've got to kind of put together, Jenga wobbly tower, and often kind of Tetris blocks that are flying at you, and you have to try and work out how you're going to put them all together. So. It's an ongoing process, it's complicated, it's difficult, um, and sometimes it feels a bit of a mess and a bit out of control. However, we know that all these blocks are really valuable. We, 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 we know the blocks, we like the blocks, they've come from you, the community, and you're all wonderful people. So we've reached this inflection point for Europlanet, partly because the way that we've been funded up until this point is changing. So what the Commission wants, how it's going to fund us in the future is going to change. So we can't we can't stick with plan A. It's got to change anyway. Um, and also we've put together this new Europlan Association, a legal structure um, called the Europlan ASBL, Europlan Association Internationale Sans But Lucratif, um, which has is has been put together by Anne Karine, our new president elect, and Didier, our treasurer hosted by the Royal Belgian Institute for Space Aeronomy um, in Brussels. Um, so we're incredibly lucky with all of that, but it's a time to review everything and to think about things. So we need to review our organization. We need to review our operations. We need to rebuild our community. A lot of us working within the Europlanet structures and society and the boards and the committees and the working groups have noticed, you know, over the past couple of years, it's been difficult to keep the energy going, to keep the momentum going. People have had things going on, they've changed, or they've, the circumstances have changed. We need to revitalize that community. Um, and we need to recruit new members to join the society, and then also just active people to bring those, those elements um, of the society, those, those working groups, those board members, those um, committees, to keep everything going, or, or not necessarily everything going, to, to keep what we decide at the end of this road mapping process going and make it sustainable for the future. I should also say that we are here co-hosted with EPEC Annual Week. 
So welcome all EPEC Annual Week participants, our Early Careers Europe and Early Career Network. We're unbelievably happy to have you here with us. Um, EPEC has traditionally been one of the most active areas of Europlanet. It formed, it actually predates the Europlanet Society. It formed in 2017. Um, and it has been developed by early careers for early careers. So we're very proud of it. Um, but it has its own identity within our community. It has its own needs. It has its own, uh, its own ways of working, and that's great. However, it is also part of the Europlanet community. And so it's really nice that this time we've got the EPEC meeting embedded within the, the wider meeting. So hopefully you can feel a core part of our community um, and use this opportunity to get to know other people within the community so that we're crossing generational divides and, um, and um, other areas. And um, you, it's an opportunity for everybody to get to know each other. So EPEC people, form your own team. Um, form your own identity, that, that's absolutely brilliant, but also talk to other people during the week um, and get to know and use this as an opportunity to network and build your contact base. So finally, the aims of the week are to have fun, hopefully. Um, we, we hope you have a brilliant time here in, in Bratislava. Um, we hope that you will make new contacts, you will make friends, you will possibly form some new scientific collaborations. Um, but we want you people here in the room, people watching online, we need you to play an active part. We've paid for you to come to Bratislava. Um, there are strings attached. The strings are that we need you to help us um, in, in taking this society forwards and this association forwards. We, we desperately need new ideas, new people, um, new momentum. And so we don't, at the end of the week, um, we've got road mapping exercise coming up that we'll introduce in a moment. It shouldn't be a case of you saying to us, you, Nigel, and Kareen, Anita, whoever, you should do this. It should be a case of all of us together coming up with a plan of we as a community will do this and we together will find ways of, of achieving this. So I've talked a lot and I'm now going to hand over to Nigel. Um, Nigel Mason, our outgoing president and coordinator of the Europlanet Research Infrastructure. Just the button to press it forward. That one. Right. <laughs> Before I... Anita's done an excellent job in thanking everybody, but of course, one person she hasn't thanked is herself. So can we give a really big round of applause to Anita? And, uh, and so the next two presentations are so short about where we've come from and where we're going. Uh, but again, um, Anita has actually been here almost from the beginning uh, and in, uh, in 2024. So. Uh, just some very brief slides of where we are. So your planet was established uh, around about 2004. Why was it chosen in 2004? Because that was when the Cassini-Huygens mission reached the Saturnian system. And the Huygens probe was the first kind of all European uh, instrument uh, which was launched into the system. So it was a very key moment for ESA. At that stage, uh, Sadly, some of the people uh, like Carolee from Hungary uh, uh, have passed on, but many of them got together and felt that there was a need for the European planetary science community to establish its own identity within the space sector within Europe and work together and be confident enough to say that planetary science in Europe was a strong enough science to be internationally recognized. And that's been the kind behind the driving of a lot of the Europlanet initiative. But as Anita has said, it, is, it was always based upon the fundamental principle that it is a community and it is a bottom-up exercise. It is not a top-down exercise. There are many organizations, national agencies and everything else who will try and tell the scientists what they should do. But the planetary science community and the way it predominantly works and the way that many of the missions work and the way that many of the instruments on the missions work comes from the ideas, come from the creativity of the community. You are the community. So this is, a, as Anita says, this is a landmark moment. We are, we are looking at a new era. We are not going to have a single funding model or research infrastructure. We are going to have to have a diversity of those things. 
And if we want the planetary science community to continue to be successful, as I believe it has been and will be, then this is the week where we have to decide those decisions ourselves. So it's a very different type of meeting. You're not going to sit here have lots of science talks. This is a meeting where you take over. This is your community. At the end of this week, you will be in charge. Because if you aren't, if you don't step up and take on some of the positions and all the groupings and science groups that we have, then we will not continue. So as I need to say, we've paid for you to come here. Now we're going to ask you to take over, right? So our job is done. Now, what we set out to do was to create this pan-European community. And I think uh, for those who are perhaps 30 plus who have been around to see this, I think I'd like to think that we've done that, that we do have this community and that we work as a community. For the early career people, I hope that you come in and, and you feel that you're joining a community with Epic and everything else. And as we have matured, I have a 16 year old daughter, okay, who can't be with us here now because she's taking her end of term exams. So we're having a lot of discussions about coming of age and taking responsibility, right? So we have come of age and we are talking now internationally and we have people who we've brought in. We have field sites, et cetera, in the research infrastructure board. So that's important. And this is the important point. The money we've got from the European Union over the years, the last ones from FP7 to OS in 2020, they are called research infrastructure. We have built that research infrastructure. We have built this opportunity that we all get to use each other's facilities to do the science. And that infrastructure has to be maintained. And that's one of the things we'll be discussing, particularly on Wednesday. How are we going to do that? But by working together, by collaborating with all the infrastructure that we've built, we are producing world-class science. And if you look at where the papers in the planetary science uh, journals, the number that have come from Europe are growing, and the number that are coming into science and nature and so on are growing. But just to give you some numbers here, we started in FP6, which, had, which was, a, which was a, a network. It was bring people together to talk about where we wanted to go. And that had 41 beneficiaries. Then we actually started to select beneficiaries that could provide facilities, both virtual, which is very important you'll see in a minute, and laboratory field sites. And we, and we had 27 of those, okay? Then we had, in the Horizon 2020, we were incredibly lucky. Unlike many other communities, we actually got two bites of the cherry and we've had two projects funded under the Horizon 2020 call, and we are now in this one. As you see, the numbers have continued to increase, and the number of facilities have continued to increase, and the number of countries have continued to increase. And this is our heritage. This is what we have produced, and you're going to hear all about these this week. We have this transnational access, the ability for anybody in Europe to be able to go to another country to perform research on our research infrastructures. And this is, I think, an incredible... Uh, if it wasn't there, you'd miss it. The fact that we have it, we've had it for so long, we kind of take it a little bit for granted. But we need to think about how we continue that, because I think it's a great opportunity to pull the intellectual capacity that we have in Europe. Doesn't matter where you are, you can have access to the world leading facilities that you need to do your research. And then we have a whole series of things that have been built up by our virtual access team. And again, we should never underestimate the amount of work that's gone into this. There are many other research infrastructures that focus on TAs, but Europlanet right from the beginning has focused on providing online tools. And we have some unique things in that. SPIDER, which was the first attempt to do space weather for planetary, other planets, uh, was highlighted a couple of times ago. It is unique. Uh, we have GMAP brought into the current one, geological mapping. Again, it's, as you'll hear about it this week with some of the go to the sessions, it is unique. And then the VESPA, which is, if you like, uh, the jewel in the crown, an enormous amount of effort. If you haven't looked at the amount of tools and, uh, and databases and things in that, in that uh, platform, uh, please do, because it's an immense achievement. Most recently, 
after many years, we've brought in the telescope network. We've brought in this idea of bringing in access to, to telescopes. That's something we've been trying to do for ages. We finally delivered that in this project. And also, we've brought in a new idea of bringing in machine learning into planetary science, commonly used in astronomy, not so much in planetary science. But again, they are producing tools and so on for the community. So this suite of stuff here is unique. That, that, you know, the Americans don't have this, right? Ch Chinese don't have this, but in Europe, we have it. So that's our unique program, and we want to talk about this week for how to keep that going and how to keep that maintained. And then, as I said, we have the community building. We have uh, EPEC, as we've heard, because, as we like to say, planetary science or space science in general is quite a unique area of science. You know, you build things. I mean, literally, maybe in your lifetime, you may be involved in maybe two or three missions. So you might be, you know, if you're, if you're a postdoc or an early career now, maybe the scientific return on your mission by the time you've designed it, built it, launched it, and it's got there, you may be coming up to sort of out of your career before you do it. There are enormous timescales for the things that we want to do. That means that we need this, this constant throughput of young people to come into our community and to develop our community. And that's why EPIC is so important, because without that next generation and the support of that next generation and making sure that those people are competing for the best awards, ERCs, Marie Curie, et cetera, we won't as a community have the base that we need for 10, 20 years hence. We've built the uh, conference, EPSC. We don't have it uh, in Europe this year. It's in America. But again, this was set up right at the beginning. It was one of the pioneering things from the FP6. This is where we meet. We, we can meet at other meetings, EGU, COSPAR, but this is where we as a community meet each year. Next year, it will be in Berlin. The year after, it will be in Helsinki, and our American colleagues will join us. This is a really important part of our community. And we have our links with industry increasingly important we know that's going to be a real important factor as we move ahead the space sector the space industry in europe is growing incredibly concerned about the number of people that they need and so finally we decided that to bring this all together and to continue and to find some way of sustaining it we should have the society and so we established society in 2018 uh, in, Ber in in berlin we launched it really in 2019, and sadly, we were hit, as Anita said, by the COVID. So many of the structures we put in place, the hub structures, the other committee structures, were, were, were put in place, but then the pandemic hit. This is our week to renew those. Those committees all need renewing. All the people who agreed to help set it up in 2018, 19, they did not serve for life. You can volunteer for these committees this week because we need you to do it, because this is the society that will take over the umbrella, and we now have this legal entity of the AISPL. So this is our heritage, but let's not make it a heritage site. This, we want to make sure that this week we go ahead to the next stage. So we've come of age. It's a strong legacy and a base on which to build, and I say this is the week that we and you determine the future. And so it's a different type of meeting. Put your hats on. You are planning to make sure that we are successful, but also every one of you, your career will, to some extent, also be influenced by the fact of whether we have this structure to support you and your successors in the years to come. And that's your task this week. Yeah. So what is the next one to come up? No, sorry. So nice to meet you uh, this week. Um, so we will have a very tough agenda, so I will be short. I will just say some words about the future. Um, so as it was mentioned some minutes ago, we have set up a, 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 new, a new legal entity, which is an IESBL, so Association Internationale Sans But Lucratif. And this is the way we see to make the Europlanet Society more sustainable. So uh, having a legal entity allows us to uh, ask funding for, uh, at the Commission, ask funding uh, in your countries. So that's the way to, to go further. Um, what does it mean for, for you, members of the Society? Mostly nothing, because 
ISBL is such that it will be always uh, like the society, meaning the board that you will elect uh, for the society is the same board of the ISBL. So it's just transparent. Um, it means that you, as a member, will have access through this ISBL to funding. So the funding is not restricted for the board. It's for you. Huh? you. You, again, need to be active, proactive, and, and come to us for asking funding. So um, that's some word about the ISBL. Now for the future, and this was alluded also a, a lot of uh, time just before, we need you. This is your uh, society, this is your community. We are just here to help you to get to the, to the things being done, but uh, we are not there to direct you or limit you. It's really up to you. And this will, I hope, be really started this week. And I think um, we should start indeed by first trying to understand who you are and you to understand who the other people in this room are and i think that's the exercise that we are we have invented uh, for now so <laughs> let's play yes that's right, exactly right yes so on your feet everybody yes sorry but yes so everybody on your feet please um <laughs> you can see around the room we have 10 stations I would like you all to go to a station, it doesn't matter which, doesn't matter who with, but if you can all go to a station and roughly kind of try and make it as even as possible. Sorry, I'm not standing by the microphone yes, now, so um, yeah, so can you, can you each go to a station and um, stand by station and introduce yourselves to the people around your station. Now, people who are looking online, can you, within the session chat, can you say who you are? and introduce yourselves there, please. And then we will summarize that to the rest of the group as well. So can you all please go to a station? <laughs> including you, including board members, everybody. All participants, Gregina, you can't. Okay, okay. If... Okay. You, you have, sorry, sorry, just, just saying, you, you have five minutes just to get to know everybody in your station. And then at the end of that five minutes, at the end of that five minutes, I will ask one person from each of the station to be the rapporteur who will present everybody to the group. So you need to remember, somebody needs to volunteer to remember to explain to everybody who everybody else is in the group. Okay. So people, empty stations go there. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Don't be shy. Um, Jonas. Yes. Okay. Um, online people. Um, could I ask? one of you to volunteer as well to be the presenter of who we have online. Um, if, if you could just write a, a quick summary of who we have and then we will, we will promote one of you to be a panelist and be able to speak, yes? Yeah. Then we all go, ooh. You don't have to skip number one if you don't want to afterwards. Okay. Okay. Is everybody ready? Is everybody ready? R rapporteurs, are you, are you confident? Okay. Um, I think we're going to go from 10 to 1. 
So we're going to start with number 10, group number 10. Um, Maria, is it who's? Yeah, Maria, can we ask you to introduce who you have in your group? Sure. Um, so we are a very diverse group. We have uh, everyone from uh, master students to postdocs and people from the industry. Um, I hope I remember everything correctly. But uh, Emil and Edita, they are working on the teles telescope network and on SPIDER. Um, uh, Sebastian is uh, also working on uh, SPIDER, yes. Um, then uh, uh, Shamaila is uh, a postdoc and she's working on uh, atomic and uh, molecular physics. And uh, Jose um, is doing his PhD and uh, we are working on planetary science and um, Mate is uh, in, uh, working in geophysics. Yes. Brilliant, well done, thank you, good job. Hi, Joanna. <laughs> yeah, so we're group number nine, and uh, we've got uh, Jacob, uh, who's a local. He's um, a student at the uh, local uh, university, um, and he's doing a modeling of electromagnetic fields. Um, then we've got uh, Enrica. Uh, she's a researcher at the German Aerospace uh, Center in Berlin. Um, she's the um, German the outreach officer of the German uh, hub um, and her interests are in meteoroids and asteroids for example. Um, then we've got uh, Akin, um, he's also from DLR, um, he's doing uh, his master thesis there, he's involved um, with um, yeah, um, uh, Venus, yes. And uh, then we've got uh, Edita, she's a senior researcher um, from uh, Vilnius, Lithuania and uh, she's um, doing stellar modeling and um, she's involved with the um, mentorship uh, set up uh, by Europlanet so um, set, yeah, bringing together mentors and mentees and I myself, uh, I'm Johanna, I'm from uh, Braunschweig, uh, the Institute for Geophysics and Extraterrestrial Physics, I'm a PhD student and um, I'm the co-chair of the EPIC at EPSC working group. Brilliant, thank you very much. Uh, right, group number eight, Pierre, is it? So we are the group eight. Work. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, two researchers from Hungary. One is more geologist, the other one is um, uh, making models and uh, analyzing uh, elements. I see moon, I see elements, sorry. And uh, one, uh, I think, Wolf uh, from Sweden and he's involved in the plasma physics of the interstellar medium and ionization. And we are uh, two engineers, uh, Chloe and Pierre, working at the Observatory of Paris on the Vespa project. Uh, distributing data from uh, uh, planetary science and uh, your planet. Brilliant, thank you very much. So Gareth. So group seven has uh, a more senior group, I'm sorry to admit. <laughs> so we're Stefan Arad, who you should know from the, is the, one of the leads of Vespa. And Karine, who most of you will be aware of, is actually currently the lead of the uh, Benelux hub. And then we have two, two people from the Wigner Institute here in uh, Andrea and Mohamed. Uh, Mohamed's one of the a postdoc who's uh, modeling uh, solar, solar, solar wind. Uh, Andrea is a leader of the Central European hub. Suzanne Conway is from, from Nantes, as I accuse her of being one of the continual abusers of the TA program, because she's one of the people who's about to be banned. She's had so many visits. And I'm Gareth Davis, who's the work package lead of the TA Access. Brilliant, thank you. Go, Callum. Hi, so uh, we're Group 6. Um, we've come from all around, so uh, Connor has come from uh, London to join us today, uh, Yoga from London as well, uh, Bulan from uh, Turkey, um, Nantia and Georgia uh, from the Hellenic Space Centre in Greece, um, Shushmita from uh, London, and myself from Canterbury in Kent. Brilliant, 
Oh, and of course, Carlos has joined us today from Germany. Super, brilliant. And Good brilliant. job. Good job. Uh, group five. Okay. Hi, we are group five. Um, so our group, I'm Sophia, I'm the Europlanet uh, finance officer. Uh, then we've got Didier, who is Europlanet uh, treasurer, um, Daniela, a PhD student from Portugal, uh, Hanka, a scientist and observer from Czech Republic, um, Bela Sulik, a physicist uh, from Atomki, Hungary, uh, Solmas is a researcher, geologist, um, uh, Stavros, um, um, is a recent uh, graduate, um, Icy Moons, um, a Jose PhD student from Portugal. Thank you. So hello, this is group four reporting. Um, I also have the pleasure to introduce a really diverse and really, yeah, a really diverse group, starting off strong with Magdalena on my left. Uh, she's from Poland, she's into planetary geology, and she's doing a ESA internship right now. Always on my left is Godana, she's from Macedonia, I also had to take notes, it's a lot. Uh, she's a physics teacher at the, uh, sorry, professor of astronomy at the Physics Institute. Uh, she's focusing on uh, photometry of asteroids, uh, shape modeling, and also some observations. On my left, uh, we have Bernard from France. Um, he's focusing on remote sensing of planetary surface, also on laboratory experiments, and is working with database Shade. Moving on my right, we have Lothar from Germany. Uh, he works at the FTP, which does not stand for File Transfer Protocol, as I had uh, <laughs> in my mind, but yeah. Um, it's, um, he works at a non-profit organization, European Planet GUG and um, um, is uh, doing asteroid work, and it's also really interesting working on the Focus Telescope project, which is a project free, from, free for all schools to use and, yeah, to do, use and learn with. Um, over there we have Peter from the UK. He's a PhD student uh, focusing on meteorites and asteroids, specifically on chemistry and liquid water, looking for liquid, liquid water. On the right we have Ari, he's from Finland, um, works at the FMI, um, uh, he's focused on space research and technology and he works at the Europlanet uh, Northern Hub um, lead, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and yeah, me, I'm Simone, I'm from Italy but I study and live in Vienna and I'm doing my master in, why am I reading, it's me. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm doing my master in astrophysics and my bachelor in physics and I focus on machine learning and nanotechnologies. Thank you. Excellent job, good. Federica. So hi everybody, this is group three. I'm Federica from Italy, Ina. And so I won't tell you all the names because you will have the time to look at the badges, so I don't want to bore you. But the, I mean, just briefly, we have a major team, which is planetary atmosphere in this group. Then we have uh, geology, astrochemistry, uh, social media, outreach. Uh, this is me. And, uh, but the, the most important thing that came out from this group is the importance of Europlanet, because it came out that we need to um, fund realities like the one in Botswana uh, or um, realities like uh, the one of small observatories here in uh, Slovakia. Um, so please came out with new ideas uh, this week. We are uh, so uh, looking forward to uh, new ideas and new people. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. This is group two, and I don't know if you can hear me, but I hope, okay. So here we have Itzier coming from Spain, who is studying uh, in the field of planetary atmospheres and also teaching physics. Then we have Thibaut, uh, who is science communication uh, specialist and also an outreach uh, person for the Swiss hub, but he is coming from France. And on my right side, uh, there, are, uh, there is Achilles, uh, a physics teacher, and Neo and Sotiris, who are students. Neo is Neo, yeah. Neo is uh, actually very interested in astronomy, and he has won the 
uh, uh, first place at the Astronomy Olympiad. Ah, Sotiris, sorry, sorry, I, I mixed them, Sotiris, and Neo is uh, also in a higher level of the middle school, higher grade, and he is interesting in astronomy, but also in music, so that's everything I have remembered, but we have shared a lot of information. Brilliant, thank you. And finally. Thank you. Last but hopefully not the least. So we are group one, uh, start from my left hand side. You probably know Nigel, right? He has uh, many hats, but may, you might not know that uh, he's also uh, passionate about history. So he's, uh, you know, after uh, being a president of Europe Planet, he could be a historian. Uh, then here we have a, next year. right. <laughs> he paid me to do this, right? Yeah, yeah. So Li Livia, from, uh, from Italy, she's a journalist, and um, she's also um, managing the outreach for your planet. Jonas, who is uh, a Mars scientist working at the European Science Foundation now. Fleur, who is, uh, she is, uh, she's a, a, um, a PhD student uh, working on fluids and uh, um, planets. <laughs> of course, planetary science. Uh, then we have Alexandra from Greece for the uh, island of uh, Salamina, you know, uh, because we, we talk about history, Salamina is, was an important island in uh, history. Um, and uh, she's, a, she's a teacher, so she will be very happy to uh, um, help us with outreach uh, this week. And then uh, uh, the last, last person to introduce is uh, Gracina from Li uh, Li Lit Lithuania, right? She's a, a professor in astronomy doing a, a stellar spectroscopy. Did I get it right? Okay, thank you. Excellent. Now, very good job. Now, Thomas, do we have people online that... Oh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Someone was missing. Sorry. Yeah, so that, that was one missing myself. So, uh, <laughs> I'm Luca Montaboni from Italy, living in France. A uh, Mars scientist, uh, also a founder of a company called Panorica, which does uh, research, training, and outreach. Wonderful, excellent, thank you. Um, Thomas, do we have we have people online who also have introduced themselves? Are you happy? To, can you can you read out their introduction to us, or can you promote them to so that they can present themselves? Yes, of course. Thank you. Oh, hello. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, amazing. So in the online group, we've got Ulysse, who's the education officer for Europlanet. Um, also, I apologize if I'm saying anyone's name wrong. Um, we've also got Maria Dina, who's an assistant to the policy team. Vix, who does the communications, graphic design, and helps with the magazine. Tomash a PhD student who studies ice sublimation from ice rock formations, mainly on Mars and the Moon. Um, Scott, who's from the US, who attended this year's GMAP Winter Mapping School. Um, Nikola, a physicist from Serbia, who studies the impact of cosmic rays on space weather, radiation exposure, and cosmogenic radionucleotides. Um, Prospery from Zambia, who's a regional coordinator of the Southern African Regional Office of Astronomy for Development. Um, Siddhartha, a master's student from India. And then I'm Grace, and I'm a PhD student at the Open University in the UK, and I study icy moon surface processes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Grace. Um, and some of you may recognize Grace because she did the amazing illustrations at EPSC uh, 2022. Um, and if, if you haven't seen them look online, they're amazing. So um, hopefully um, you're illustrating this week as well. Well, uh, doing bits and pieces this week, but look at look at her Twitter feed or Instagram because she's a fantastic artist as well as a great scientist. So thank you very much. Right. Thank you, everybody. Can I ask you to come and sit down, apart from the rapporteurs um, who have done such a great job, and we have another task for them to do now.
so. So, everybody, um, how are we doing for time? Oh, we're doing, we're doing quite well for time. Excellent. Right. As Nigel um, and I and Anne Karine have said, um, the point of this week is to move things forward. Um, and, the, and to do that, it's not us that we're asking to do that. We're asking you to give us the ideas, to share your views um, and help Europlanet move to the next level so that it's got a sustainable sustainable future <laughs> we have identified through the board 10 challenges five of them are related to the community so related to the activities of the society um, and five of them relate to the sustainability of services that we've developed um, over the last 18 20 years um, so we are again going to ask you including the people here in the room, but also the people online, to join a topical group for the week. So starting this morning, you will form a group. Um, we will check in with you tomorrow at the General Assembly to find out how you're getting on. And then on Friday, when we have the um, mirror version of this, this workshop, we will ask your group, and again, we need a volunteer rapporteur who will summarise the discussions of that week um, to present your findings. Um, and we've got a slide to kind of give you a bit of a format and structure on how you do that. Um, but first of all, maybe if we look at what we think the challenges are. So, Luca, could I ask you to unveil challenge number one? Oh, actually, we need the, micro uh, the microphone again. Um, just so that we can read it out. So please, unveil. Should we go? So, challenge number one is? Individual membership benefits. So, this is a thing that we have struggled with in Europlanet for a really, really, really long time. In trying to make sure that we can offer you something that's really valuable to you, beyond just a discount for EPSC. Um, and really means something and is something that the, that the community will buy into. So we, as Nigel said, we set up Europlanet Society because we felt it was really important that individuals had a buy-in to Europlanet. They had a direct connection, individual connection to Europlanet. But it's been quite hard. As, 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 as we've kind of talked about, there are lots of things that Europlanet does, but because of all the complexity of European projects and all the rest of it, it's been quite hard to explain them and what fits with what and what's membership benefits and what's free and all of that kind of thing. That kind of goes away now in that that complexity goes away because we are now just European that we are trying to do things sustainably. So basically everything that we offer more or less going forward will be a membership benefit. Um, but there are lots of challenges. How do we communicate with members? How do we make them feel part of a community? How do we make you feel part of a community? How do we, how can you, uh, how can we have effective interactions with the executive office? And actually, can I just ask the executive office team from the ESF to stand up? Um, so we have, uh, uh, introduce yourself, Jonas. It'd be better if you did that. So hi, everyone. So I'm Jonas Laridon from the European Science Foundation, a science officer there. And I've been involved with your plan for four years now uh, through the project and also as coordinator of the European Society activities. So if you have any questions, any comments, please do not hesitate to come to discuss with us about your plan society and how we move forward uh, from this day on. Hello, everyone. My name is Jean-David Baudenon, so also from ESF. Uh, I started in January to get really involved with Europlanet, uh, especially working on the websites for the new membership and also like the world membership management system. It's been interesting. So if you have any troubles with that, you have probably contacted me. Or if not, I'm sure it will happen in the future. And if there are no troubles, also please also contact us. It's always good to have nice feedback when things are working great. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Courtney. I'm also um, at ESF. 
I am in charge mostly at the minute of the newsletter. So if you're wondering who's sending that out, it's me. Um, I'm also uh, in charge of communications in part. And at the minute, we're developing some new channels for communication that will hopefully benefit the community. So please feel free to talk to me about this. Also, if you have any WordPress issues, I can help you with this. But WordPress is fairly intuitive. It won't take too long. Um, so yeah, you can talk to me about this at any time. Hi, everyone. I'm Hannah Thoman, also from the ESF. Uh, I work as a project administrator. And all of the questions that you need answer to, you can feel free to reach out to my email. Uh, as well as I will be at the stand, so feel free to reach out. I'm mostly the one dealing with the administration and giving you the reimbursements. So that's me, and hopefully we get to mingle around. Okay, so so thank you, thank you, ESF team, for, for introducing yourselves. So people that join this first challenge number one topical team, um, talk to each other. Talk to the team at the ESF, talk to other people in the room, find out what people think, what, what works, what doesn't work, what you're really not clear about, what you think would be really good. Also talk to Didier um, Moho, who is our treasurer, who understands what the finances of Europe and are, are like. Because if you come to us and you say, we would like you to do this and it's going to cost you 2 million euros a year, then that's not going to be helpful to us because we can't do that. But within the constraints of what is actually possible, um, these are the things that we need to look at. And are there tools that we should be looking at? You know, there are plenty of free things like Discord, excuse me, um, that um, that we could be using and we haven't been using up until this point. The yeah. other thing that I should say, and this will come up again in the next session with the, about the regional hubs, if you are a committee member, if you are involved in Europlanet, we have all of these tools that Courtney just mentioned. Um, book in a slot with her and Jean-David. Book in 30 minutes during this week where you can sit down with them and go through everything so that you're really sure that you know what is there, feel really confident about how you can use it, um, and then you're not reliant on all of us. You know, there, there are ways that you, you, can, you can do things with, you, without breaking the site if you're not confident. Um, we can... We can help you, we can guide you, we can approve things before they go live. Um, but we really, really, really want you to, in, to encourage you to do things for yourself, to be, um, to be liberated, to send out messages to your regional hub so that you, you, know, you, you, you don't have to rely on us. So please do book in time with, with uh, Courtney, Jean-David and so on during the week and take opportunities with that. Okay, so that was a long one with, with um, challenge number one. Challenge number two. So, challenge number two is early career support. Right. Um, actually, James may want to say something about this as um, as really the chair this year of EPEC Annual Week. Um, so, we've said before that early careers are a really important part of our community, um, and EPEC will be doing their own road mapping and structural session. Oh, you're being chased by microphones. There we go. So go for, go for it, James. Yeah. Um, so hi, everyone. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, meeting the EPEC participants exclusively in person in the next session. Um, but we have a uh, yeah, diverse range of stuff we're doing in the annual week this week. So there's a few training things and there's a few sessions we've got set aside for us to understand what EPEC needs to be for its members, what the members can contribute to EPEC um, and uh, yeah, what they want from EPEC and how EPEC can get what the members want from the society. So if anyone's got anything they think they can help us with, if anything they think they can support the young members with, any opportunities you think our members would benefit from having, um, then just come and see me. I'll be around all week. Um, and then obviously the EPEC guys, we will have some dedicated sessions where we can brainstorm and ask these questions um, ourselves among, among ourselves. So um, either side you think you can contribute, um, I'm the guy you need to talk to. So just come and say hi. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much, James. Right, Federica, challenge number three. I'm not the right person for this work because I'm too short. <laughs> I will try. Okay. So number three is capacity building for planetary science. So we need to build our community. So we need to build our membership, as we talked about um, at number one. But we also need to build our connections within the community. And there's lots and lots and lots of underrepresented groups or groups that we haven't yet interacted with. The reason that we're holding ERIM here in Bratislava is that we know that really engaging with Eastern Europe, Southeast Europe, underrepresented states, as we, as we tend to call them within Europlanet, we need to come to you. 
Um, at EPSC, we've been tracking the, um, the, the representation by, by Eastern European, Central European, Northern European underrepresented countries for years now, and it's still hovering at less than 10%. You know, even when we support bursaries, even when we uh, try to get the message out and really make, make an effort, it's, it's still not getting there. So we've got this meeting here. We want to hear from you about your thoughts, your ideas, your input. Likewise, beyond EU borders. Um, we have Fulvio here from, from Africa. Um, sorry, I should have said, uh, we also have Ariana here, who is the chair of the diversity committee. Um, so also looking at societal issues. Who, who do we have in underrepresented groups in terms of um, people with accessibility issues, with, with socioeconomic um, challenges, with, with cultural, racial, whatever. We want to make sure that we are inclusive. We are not accidentally excluding people. We want to make sure that we are looking at what's at the leading edge of, of, of best practice in terms of EDI, um, widening participation and inclusion, um, so that we are you know, doing our best to be a welcoming and, and inclusive um, community. Sorry, Ariana, do you want to just say something briefly? Uh... Oh, sorry. <laughs> what? So, sorry, so, so, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I, I, I Soma, uh, Ariana is on the committee, but Solmas is the is the is the vice chair, and I am I am mortified, Solmas. <laughs> it was you, you were in my line of sight, and I'm a bit distracted today. Please don't worry, Ariana and I both also work in the diversity committee. Um, yeah, I'm very glad to be here. If you have any comments about how Europe Planet, how EPSC, how Epic, how everything that's happening here can be more diverse, we can accommodate for you know, for all of you, for all your needs, what you need, what you would like to have more, just come to us. Ariana is there, I'm here. Come talk to us. We really need your ideas, your input, so that we can make every event of Europlanet more diverse. <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, number four, challenge number four. All right, make some noise for Ooh. challenge number four. <laughs> That would be industry and policy engagement. Right. So, again, this is something that we have struggled with ever since we started Europlanet. We know that we should do this. We know that we should engage beyond our own community. We should talk to industry because there's lots of benefits from collaboration. We know that we should be talking to policymakers so that we have a coherent voice and do that in a way that uh, in language that they understand yoga. Um, we have we have people from industry this week. So far, we have Yoga from um, the industry team. He will be joined by Hieronimo and Marcel uh, uh, today. Um, we also have our policy team online. So Maria Dina, I definitely saw her online, um, but we have a great policy team as well. Um, if you want to say something, yeah, we'll introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Yoga. Um, Marcel and Hieronimo are leading the industry team. I'm supporting them at these activities. And we're having a session, a discussion on Wednesday afternoon, which is a joint event with policy, where we're trying to see how industry and academia can work together to create more collaboration opportunities. So if you're interested, please attend and participate in that. Super. Brilliant. Thank you very much. OK, challenge number five. Sorry, we're, we're, we're going to rover on after, <laughs> after doing quite well. So Sophia. Challenge number five. Wait Ooh. for us. <laughs> Uh, society structures, recruitment, plus participation in other projects. Right. So we have, as we saw earlier, Europlanet is quite complicated. There's lots of different bits to it. We are represented by the executive board. Executive board members, can you put up your hand um, now so that you can wave? I think I think we're running out of time for people to introduce themselves. But um, we have Anne Karim, we have Livia, we have uh, Didier, Nigel, Ricardo is is around. Anyway, Ricardo is around. There we go. So we we have more than half our board here and more online. So please talk to them during the week. Um, but if you are involved in Europe and if you've been involved in structures, if there are things that you feel are missing, if there are things that you feel don't work, tell us in your group, decide what you what you think are recommendations, but also you talk to the ESF team, talk to talk to everybody. Um, and again, we'll, we'll kind of come to, back to that at the end of the week. Right. Number six. So now we're moving towards the services side of Europlanet. So this one is. OK, so challenge number six is sustainable access to facilities and field sites. Right. 
so the man the man himself is standing behind you <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um Nigel has talked about the brilliant science that has come out of transnational access and sharing access to facilities and field sites. And some of you may have the opportunity to go to visit the facilities at Comenius University either this afternoon or any afternoon this week. Um, there's amazing things that come out of it. There's many people who are involved in the TA programs here. So if you don't know about it, there are people that you can talk to, like, like Gareth, who's the next rapporteur number seven. Um, and uh, Enrico as well, who, who manages facilities and DLR. Anyway, there's lots of people involved in facilities here. So how do we sustain this? How do we do that? What kind of could we have organizational membership where there's a subscription to buy into that? Um, can we do more remote access? Are there other things that we can do? Are there other funding models, co-funding models um, that we'll be able to apply for in future grants? So that's a really exciting topic. Gareth. On a related subject. This is the sustainability sustainable access to virtual surfaces so gmap spider vespa and the machine learning tools exactly the same questions how do we keep that going without future full funding from the european union and if you don't know what vespa and spider and gmap and machine learning tools are offered by Europlanet this week. Uh, this week, there is really the opportunity. There is no excuse to go home and not know all about it. There is a Vespa workshop that starts after lunch. Um, there are machine learning and GMAT ones on Thursday and Spider ones on Wednesday, I believe. Uh, Spider is planetary space weather. GMAP is geological mapping. Machine learning, suite of tools, all kinds of planetary challenges addressed. Um, and Vespa is this enormous portal um, that uh, Stefan, Era, where are you, Stefan? Yes. Um, and Pierre and uh, Chloe and the team have been developing. It's an incredible resource. Now uh, the, the EPN tap protocols have been installed on many different data sets to make it accessible. And it's a, it's a fantastic thing. So please go to the Vespa workshop because it's fantastic and amazing and everybody should use it. Um, right, number eight. Number eight is what everybody's expecting. Challenge, sustainable access to telescope from professional and amateur support. So we established a Europlanet telescope network in 2020. Um, we've been providing funds for people to go and visit services um, and use, use telescope facilities. Um, we would like that to continue. And Ricardo and Hari and um, Gregina and many people have been involved in supporting Pro-Am collaborations over many years now. And there's been fantastic results that have come out of that. It's a really important thing for Europlanet. We're very, very committed to um, that relationship as well between pros and am amateurs um, because there's so much potential that can come out of it. Um, this is a great challenge um, to be involved in. So that's number eight. Number nine. Okay, so for number nine, okay, it's a long title. Sustainable community, support services, training, expert exchanges, outreach, mentoring, funding, etc. cetera. Uh, right, yes. So there's, there's, there's many things that all have links to them. And, you know, over the years, Europlanet has produced incredible resources, training resources. So for ex example, the GMAT Winter School, um, that was started in um, uh, two or three years ago has been growing almost exponentially um, over the past few years. And um, but we have outreach resources. We have uh, we have the mentoring service that Edita, raise your hand, um, runs. We want to keep those going as well, but we want to make them more useful, more visible, more sustainable for the community. And we need people who will help us work out how to do that. And then finally, ten. So 10 is EPSC, Europlanet Science Congress meetings and science-led activities. So at the moment, EPSC tends to be our big focus. Um, it's unusual this year that we're having this meeting because um, EPSC is going to be in the States. And we, after COVID and all the rest of it, we felt we needed to get the, the community together. We won't be able to do this kind of thing very often. Um, but we could collaborate with more with other meetings. There are Italian national meetings, there are Spanish national meetings, UK national meetings. How do we fit in with those? What kind of relationships do we need with EGU, DPS, um, other international organisations? So those are the 10 challenges. Can I now ask you to get up and go 
to whichever challenge most appeals to you. Now, I would just say that the board and the ESF people, the, the, the kind of um, the, the management Europlanet team, we're not involved in this. We would like, you are welcome to come to us and consult with us, um, but we're not going to be driving that discussion. We need that to come from you guys. Um, so please choose a topic. People online, there should be a discussion thread for each of the topics. Um, so people online and people at each of these boards, can you liaise around that thread um, and keep that discussion going? It's up to you to choose if there are tools like murals, miros, um, uh, online boards or whatever, or just a Google document, how you want to have that discussion with people in the room and with people online, it's kind of up to you. But please, can you let the people online know through the discussion thread initially as to, as to how you're going to progress it? So people, can you, can you choose a topic? And I'm oh, sorry, just before that, uh, wake up the computer. Oh, it's got a password. Right. So these are the topical themes to summarize and we'll put them, we'll put them on the website. We'll put them on the Hoover platform. There's a thread each for each of these on the Hoover platform, but this is what we want you to do at the end of the week. We want you to list priorities. What are the most important things that we should be thinking of? You don't have to have, well, it's up to you how many priorities you want to have. Um, it can be a couple, it can be five. Some of these are big topics, so maybe there will be lots. We're not expecting you to solve every problem by Friday. Um, that's clearly not realistic. Um, but if you can give us some practical action, actions for how to take the next steps, it may be recommendations for how you would take the next steps to take the next steps after that. It may be kind of baby steps. But if you can make some recommendations about practical actions that we should be doing. And then in the third column, a task force. Who are the people that should be involved in that? Who from your topical group would like to take this forward? Um, if there is anybody, you don't, you don't have to stick with it. You're not bound to it for life, but you are bound to it for the week. Um, who, do you, who do we need to rope in from the society, from the diversity committee and SOMAS and, um, and the EPEC and, and whatever? Who do we need to, to enlist for that? Are there the other external people that we need to get involved in that? Do we need to collaborate with, with other groups? So these are the three things that we're going to be asking you to do. Is that clear? Superb. Right. If you have any questions, I'm here all week. You can ask questions of me, Anne-Karine, Nigel, Livia. We're all here to support um, Jonas and the rest of the team as well. Um, so please, can I ask you to go and choose a topic, choose a topic that you will live with for the next week, five days. Are you all right? Okay. Anita, maybe you can say that this is someone has a big person who wants to speak. Yeah. It, it, Spread out as much as you can. It may not be exactly even, but if you can spread out as much as you can, that would be great.
please go and go and get coffee while you can. Um, we're, we're, and, and then get ready for the next session. Just to remind everybody what the next sessions are, I think we have, uh, we have, we have regional hubs in this room. We have um, de uh, developing the regional hubs in this room, led by Anne Kareen. We've got the Vespa workshop in the Huber Lounge, which is on the ground floor up the little steps and to the side. And then we have EPEC introductory icebreaker session. So, so that's what you can do after lunch. After coffee, after coffee, after coffee. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I just had a question about when groups should meet. That is up to you. You have all week, you can meet in lunch breaks, you can meet, you can have coffee together, you can have breakfast together, you can go out for a drink together, you can have a breakout at some point if you so decide. There's lots and lots of spaces around the venue. In the lobby, you can go and sit and just chat. Um, there are nice places to go and sit and chat along by the river. So it's up to you to decide how you want to do that. Okay?